Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Just fantastic. Captain's log, subdates 221215.7. On the 15th day of moistness, my whole crew gave to me a small tin of light fluid, a USB C cover, and a set of keys that open no doors. Now, if I open one door with them, do I get a prize? Hello, everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'd like to talk about Just Stop Oil, Extinction Rebellion, and the German group last generation. All three have been busy of late, as we're getting into the merry meggy month of moistmas. Full swing in fact, mere days away from gorging ourselves on the tears of the poor. The oikery suffering is absolutely scrumptious. Their activities have increased. Some of what we are going to discuss today concern updates, but one or two of them are hilarious especially as somebody now has a brand new feature on their body. We'll save that for the end. To start, just stop oils, Hannah Hunt and Eden Lazarus, could you sound any more middle class and I love the alliteration, have both been ordered to take some time away from their middle class shopping in Waitrose to compensate the National Gallery after they were found guilty of causing more than £1,000 worth of damage to the Haywain, which is John Constable's most well-known painting. What they did was they printed posters of a dystopian reimagining of the landscape and taped them to it before gluing their hands to its gilted frame. At the time, at the time, Hannah Hunt had said, you can forget our green and pleasant land, when further oil extraction will lead to widespread crop failures, which means we will fight for food. Both were convicted of causing criminal damage by a district judge. Their defense was that Articles 10 and 11 under the European Convention of Human Rights gave them lawful excuse for their actions. Articles 10 and 11 give people the rights of freedom of expression and assembly. The judge rejected this, pointing out that the damage was significant, not trivial, and that the defendants were reckless and caused it without lawful excuse. They have an 18-month conditional discharge, pay £540.74 each, and if they commit any further offences, they are liable to have the matter reopened and the court could in fact send them to prison. La 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 Now while they may have avoided prison, Eden Lazarus and Hannah Hunt, Just Stop Oil have claimed 150 of their followers are political prisoners of the state. This was during a protest outside of parliament. Dozens of protesters gathered in Parliament Square before marching through central London, chanting that their demands that the government halts all new fossil fuel contracts. If anyone pays attention to the UK government, they're not halting. They stopped outside the Home Office, where they held up their iconic orange Just Stop Oil signs, with banners reading, No Prison for Peaceful Protest. A Just Stop Oil spokesperson called Indigo Rumble Low. <laughs> I didn't realize the Wombles were on your side. We will not sit by and watch while the government imprisons peaceful people for conspiring to care. While they take away all our fr well, I'm not editing that out. While they take away all our rights and freedoms, while they carry on torching the climate. New oil and gas is the greatest act of mass murder in human history. Those who support this criminal plan are complicit in genocide. They will be the ones on trial for years to come. Our supporters understand what the government and the police have not yet grasped. Your laws and punishments mean nothing in the face of a certain collapse of our food supply, our ordered civil society, our peace and security. We face the loss of everything we hold dear. We will continue to resist until the government makes a critical U-turn to announce an end to new fossil fuel licenses in the UK. During October and November, the Metropolitan Police arrested 755 Just Stop Oil terrorists, charged 188. In this period, 11,923 officer shifts were required to respond to Just Stop Oil activity. I wonder how the knife crime stats looking in London these days. Now, more than 150 people have been imprisoned for their involvement in these protests including 51 people remanded on a single day in September, and 24 who are currently in prison. All political prisoners, everyone. All of them. <laughs> 
amazing. It's cute that you try to make yourself seem like bigger victims than you actually are, and to consider yourselves political prisoners. That's interesting because you don't play politics. You don't have any politicians. You believe you're fighting a political issue, but you're not actually playing the political game to achieve it. You're just pissing everyone off. Now, I think it would be a good time to point out that Just the Oil are not hypocrites in any sense of the word. They do not go out of their way to appear hypocritical in the slightest, ignoring the solvent hand to road paintings and other things. I just wait for the day it's their own face, because much like with the wind changes and you're pulling a funny face, we're going to leave it there so it's stuck. To further cement the point that they are not hypocritical in the slightest, courtesy of the Telegraph, Just Stop Oil admit they drive petrol cars, but that doesn't make them hypocrites. They are victims of a fossil fuel economy. Dr. Larch Maxi, a climate scientist from the Eco Group, said that some members still drive cars and fill up with petrol. The climate activist of three decades, who lived under London's Euston Station for 30 days during a separatist HS2 protest, told The Telegraph, we're all part of the fossil fuel economy, we have to function within that, so just doing our best within that to push for the necessary change. Further rejecting the idea that Just Stop Oil should have a policy for members to only use public transport, saying no, this group is open to everyone. It's a coalition working with everyone in society with just one demand, no new licenses. Adding, this isn't about pointing the finger at individuals. It's about everyone coming together, pulling together, rolling up our sleeves and getting the government to stop being criminals and start being responsible. It's really important that we don't shame and blame the victims. We are all victims of this horrendous crime against humanity of fossil fuel production in a climate emergency. It's strange really because you then are using this as a scapegoat for why you're backing up so much traffic that have to leave their engines running by law, creating more pollution because they're all victims as well. Don't worry everyone, they're there to fight for you. They have the five rings. They're going to summon Captain Planet. He's going to save you all until he touches those emissions and then he's going to crash and burn in the ground, where he'll then be molested by Ronald McDonald at one of the drive throughs Now, as many of you know, Scotland have pledged money in the form of reparations for countries that have been affected in Africa and, I believe, Pakistan via the climate emergency. Money they don't have, but they've been cutting it from their NHS budget to do it, so they look good in the process. Both Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil activists disrupted an energy awards bash in Aberdeen recently. They staged a demonstration outside the Offshore Energies UK event, which was held at Aberdeen's P&J live venue. Around a dozen activists, so a huge crowd, camped outside the self-congratulatory Shell-sponsored ceremony in protest against greenwashing. They hit out at energy giant Shell's disgraceful nomination for an energy transition award, with Just Stop Oil activist Lee saying just 10% of their capital expenditure is being invested in low-carbon initiatives. How is that a transition? Instead of hosting fancy dinners, Shell should recognize that humanity is in emergency mode. The time for awards for oil and gas achievements is well over. Being the talented musicians that they are, they marched, they bashed about with some snares and bass drums, tom-toms, while also chanting no new oil and holding up the obligatory signs. Now, as things are a bit colder up there, you'd be hard pressed to find a larger group. A spokesperson for the Offshore Energy UK group said, we need to recognize and celebrate those who are pioneering through oil and gas offshore wind, hydrogen, carbon capture to bring down emissions and boost homegrown energy resources. We respect the right to peaceful protests, but we would encourage those who are willing to take part in meaningful and solution-focused discussions to do so. And there's a point there. You complain when they put 10% of their profits into transitioning. They're not going to put it all in there, are they? Because it's a risk. Transition means slowly take your time. A transition isn't done, everyone, it's done. No, that's not how this works. If you think that's how this works, you're a moron. I'll agree expediting would probably yield a quicker result, of course. But, and this is a big but, not related to this at all, but I want to throw it in there anyway. Where are the rest of you? Did no one else have any thin late gloves? Or did the earlier mentioned Womble, Indigo Rumble though, <laughs> God, that name is terrible, have all of it? Recently, Michael Gove announced a new coal mine, the first in the UK in 30 years. It was in fact given a green light. Michael Gove justified it by pointing out the steel industry in the United Kingdom needed it. 
something which the steel industry is desperately trying to play down. A coal mine in and of itself will face many legal challenges anyway. Michael Gove championed this one as being environmentally friendly, but also vital because of our dependency on import to be able to fuel what the steel industry say it requires that they say they don't require. I only knew about this because when Michael Gove presented this to the Commons, he breached the ministerial code by not providing the entire speech, only one page of it, and clearly reading extra that required a recess. Many critics of this believe that it in turn is a waste of money and does not keep up with the change in market where the steel industry is going more towards green steel. How does this tie to Just Stop Oil? They tweeted out, Breaking, Michael Gove says emissions from the new coal mine will be offset by equally modern technology. Quote, Yes, the mine will cause 400,000 tons of CO2 a year, but will also bring back the penny farthing. Can I have a penny farthing? Now the final thing I want to talk about, and the one I have held off on and is on the thumbnail, it has to be used, concern last generation in Germany. It is the German version of Just Stop Oil, where a member of it stuck his hand to the road using superglue mixed with sand. The reason why is because the sand in turn prevented the glue from being dissolved. It created a cement-like substance. So how did they free him? Well, ha, huh. to free this individual, they had to remove the tarmac from the road. After the block of tarmac was cut away, the man was able to stand up and walk around with the chunk of road glued to his hand. Should be noted though, he was not detained by the police after the protest, which obviously amuses all of us, causes us to roll our eyes because he should be. Criminal damage to the road, come on, that poor defenseless road did nothing to him. Last generation posted a photo of him sat inside a building still with the block of tarmac glued to his hand. Doesn't he look happy? Like he's doing his bit for the environment by taking it home with him like a souvenir. It's gonna take time, skin grafts, new fingerprints, but it's always possible you could become one with the road. You're lucky that's not the Berlin Wall. There is a woman after all in Germany who thinks she's married to part of it. If you were connected to that in any way, she'd boink your brains out. German style. The condition of the man's hand at this present moment is not known, and last generation haven't posted any updates on the issue. So we don't know if this dipshit has a fully functioning right hand. So I guess all we can do here is hope and pray that poor defenseless tarmac is returned to its people. The great link of tarmac in the near future without your hand. But I would recommend if you can't remove it, a removal of the hand placed inside a rather hot room chamber, maybe a, I don't know, an oven, should suitably heat up the tarmac enough to remove the hand and we might even be able to give it back to you once Hannibal Lecter has finished scratching his balls with it and shat the rest out.